Hey coach, uh, welcome. I'm glad you found us on YouTube. A couple things. First of all, make sure you subscribe and like. That's super important. Um, also go over and make a, make sure you check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of state championships, a lot of national championships. Let me help you become a better basketball coach. Go over and check us out at teachhoops.com. Remember to subscribe. Enjoy the video. Like you said, I'm a golf professional. Uh, I played golf time for about eight years, so just a little bit about me. Um, and I'm going to give some shout out to uh, Coach Corman. Um, that book is fantastic. Uh, we were talking about it a little bit briefly beforehand, so I highly recommend reading that. Uh, so, um, over the last five years, I've been start uh, working in the, the golf business. So I've been teaching lessons and running golf courses for the past five years. And um, I'm going to talk today about the golf. One of the difficult things in my field is getting people to go from a driving range where there's no real defined target practice, if you will, and take their game. That's where we practice. We practice on basketball or baseball player. We play baseball on the baseball field. Uh, we practice on something that has nothing to do with our game. Really. It's just repetitive shots after shot. And then they need to transfer it to the golf course where it is just defined. And all of a sudden you've got trees, and all of a sudden you've got bunkering, and so on and so forth. It's very difficult to take one, one aspect to the other. Um, but we're finding that the same kind of situation occurs in, in practice for basketball, for baseball, for any other sport. And transferring it into a game situation is one of the things that's, that's difficult. Uh, quick show you how many players, how many coaches do you have a player who excels in practice or is even improved in the practice and the end of the game is like completely they forget, right? I mean, uh, I expect everybody to. Uh, be in that situation. And one of the reasons for that is because in practice, we want to start practice the way that we play it. Um, layout lines have nothing to do with playing basketball. It's just, it's a warm up or something to do where you are repetitive and doing something for a technique, uh, you're engraving something, and so on and so forth. There's a time and place for that. But, um, so let's start out first uh, defining the block and randomized practice. Block practice is doing the same thing over and over and over again. In my world, I assume some of you play golf, so if none of you play golf, so please stop me now, so I won't use another golf analogy. Um, and there won't really be that many. But that's what people do with golf. They go to the driving range, they hit 10 wedges, they hit 10 set irons, they hit 10. Each block of 10 is block practice. In basketball, I'm going to shoot 50 foul shots in a row. I have never seen someone shoot 50 foul shots in a row in a game. But that's what we do to the grams, you know, and that's, that's block practice. It's exactly what it's like. It is creating uh, chaos, creating random. That's um, using the basketball example. It's taking a three-pointer and a foul shot on the layup, and then taking another three-pointer and a foul shot on the corner, and then pulling up the open and the key. kind of move about and so on and so forth. A lot more game-like because you rarely have the opportunity to consistently take the same shot over and over again. A uh, little background on this stuff. Late 70s, uh, there was a study done by a couple of guys. I actually went to the guys uh, based on the study that ran. I actually don't know the first thing that But uh, Shay and Morgan did the study. Uh, subsequently, there have been studies in baseball, basketball, other sports, where they took two, two groups and they did a block, uh, block skill acquisition with one and a random skill acquisition with the other. And more or less, the gist of the study was they would show them that they or some sort of stimulus, and there was a pattern that they had to, to, to do it. So there was an A and a C, and group one, the block group, would do A, 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 it's really happening with an A, and then they would do B, and then they would do C. The second group would do that in a random order. The only rule was that they couldn't do the same, uh, that they couldn't do A and like twice around. And what they found is that the group that did block was, was consistently getting better, 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 which was when they were learning how to do it. Uh, both groups started out about the same, same level, and as they went, the block, block times were lower, sorry, and the uh, random times were not going quite as fast. A, a time period later, they did it again, and, and motor learning was called transfer. Basically, okay, you, you acquired the skill, you acquired the memory, did you repeat it? Uh, I don't know, you like ran for test when I was in, in school, you learned everything to make it for uh, same general idea. So they did a uh, time period there. The mic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
So they did it uh, a time period later. And in reality, at that point, after the time period, you can't just do block at that point. What they found was that the people who did block regressed significantly in, in their response times. Whereas the people who did the random practice, they only regressed at all. They retained the information significantly better. Uh, the studies I refer to in baseball and basketball, so the, the same situations occur. And so they gave the conclusion that random practice is bad for whatever reason. And it wasn't why. Why is it bad? Um, and I think we can all figure out that a lot of practice, you are doing, you're doing A and you just figure it out. And you repeat, it's, it's, there's an input, there's an output, and once I figure out the output, I just keep doing it. Um, whereas with randomized practice, you have to continually figure out uh, the, the way to solve the problem. And so, because you constantly solve the problem, instead of solving it once, it tends to uh, retain better in the back of your mind. Um, there's a great website out there called Train, uh, trainonthewing.com. I don't know if any of you guys have ever looked at it before. Uh, a lot of the stuff that they do has to do, to do with this, but their, their big thing is everything you do in almost every sport is read, plan, do. For example, on the point where I'm coming out of court, I'm reading the court. Oh, it's man to man defense. I figured it out. Here we are. Now we've got to come up with a plan. Uh, we've got to make a role play. Let's run this big role play. I planned it. You may or may not succeed, but you've been in that situation. You've planned it. You've done it. Subsequently, you've got a defense. They're coming down here. Okay, here's what's going on. They're reading really the situation. They're going to have a plan that I've So everything you do is just what you plan to do. Uh, in block practice, you read plan to do about three or four times before you just stop reading the plan and just keep doing it. Right? Um, if I shoot foul shots at that boy, the first time I have to figure out how to throw away the and top three shots in, I'm no longer really worried about it. If I keep moving myself on the court, I have to continually adjust how, how much force I'm putting into the shot, where the shot's going, whether or not they're back with a visual back or all that other jazz. Um, and so a lot of the, a lot of the reason that people believe in this is the case is because we don't have the opportunity to continually relearn. Uh, how many people drove here using GPS? Right. And I figure a number of people, I know this doesn't sound like it has anything to do with it. In block practice, we're kind of disengaged. We just continually do it. Uh, the same thing happens when we drive by GPS. How many people who go here with GPS are planning on not driving on with GPS? No GPS in my own? Most of the time when you drive with GPS, it's just going to tell you what to do. I don't know how long. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just going to tell you what to do. There's an input, and you just do it. There's an output. Um, when we drive with maps, when we drive with, we know where we're going, so on and so forth, we create a brand that's called Problem with Maps. Um, and I'm going to give a simple example of this, but when I play golf all the time, I just to drive up and down the East Coast. Um, I can probably get you within 20 miles of just driving the city and the East Coast, just off of memory, because I did this back before GPS was a thing. And so in my brain, I'm not caught up on maps where the roads are, at least the major ones. On the East Coast. On the other hand, and Lauren can attest to this, Reading is 20 minutes away. I, I can get Reading easier because every time I'm in there, she's from Reading. She can tell me where it is or where you GPS, and I know you're like, I don't know what to do. But if you put me in Hartford, I might be able to get you there just because I didn't do that with GPS. So the same thing happens in that block and randomize. One situation I learned repetitively and one I'm on. Another good example of that is our daughter is three, and she is able to just spit out words. We read the same books over and over and over again. Frustrating, but yeah, yeah. she can basically verbatim say some of the things that are on one page of a, a book. She can't read, it, she's three. And none of us would sit there and look at that and go, oh, she can read. She's just memorizing those in the book. We put it in that page, she knows what that page says, and then she offers the words. Uh, when we learn how to read, when we learn how to do something, the randomized thing, uh, she's able to actually piece together the letters and can solve the problem. So, what does that mean for basketball for the moment we figure out, right? Uh, well, first off, we have to kind of figure out when is it the time to use each style. There's certainly, there was a benefit in that first sight, right? For people who learned a lot, not learn it, they just didn't uh, repeat it as well. Uh, one of the 
was things that they found in the baseball study, or if you were teaching somebody who they had baseball, you teach a kid to get an MIT, because they have to learn the first right? If, if you've got a major league baseball pitcher throwing the pitch, it's, <laughs> they're never going to get them in an action learning skill. So that you learn to hit on a team, and then you have somebody who throws a coach pitch, and that creates a randomized uh, target, but they're really trying to help the kid hit it. At some point, they go farther and further along, and they are not only randomized, but the pitcher's actually trying to throw a spot that they can hit. It's beyond random. And so learning that block pattern of throw, being able to just repetitively do the motion, uh, is huge for somebody who's beginning to learn a skill. Uh, it might be a beginning player on your basketball team. I'm sure there's a wide variety of uh, people in here as far as the, the skill levels when I do my hands middle school and uh, I know that some of you who coach in college, vastly different situations. So uh, beginning players are going to want a little bit more block practice. So you're going to want to do a little bit more of this technique where you're seeing the brain and the skill, but you do need to, to move that to the analyze the sooner the better, but they have to have acquired the skill, otherwise it's too difficult for them to actually So it's one of the best times for you to use block practice. Um, you want to use random legs as much as possible. Uh, advanced players, um, simple tasks are a great way uh, to do that. Um, certainly there are some things, I mean, I know I kind of wrote the layout lines a little bit earlier, but let's face it, if you want your, your player, they've got a lot of open they should be all about right? I mean, the last thing you want is them like learning how to do it while they're in the middle of the game. You want that to be something to close their eyes and do. That's what you're looking for. This is something that is it's just done. I mean, I have it every time. Uh, however, as soon as the defender is involved, it's no longer the same motion every single time. It's no longer right left. Uh, right? It's, okay, maybe I'm going to be that. Maybe I need to, to lower my shoulder and bounce off of them. Or maybe it's they're in the back left and down that pass. Uh, that's that we plan to do. We're constantly doing something that's just option A, option A, option A. That there isn't very much to it. I want to use Coach Max uh, thing here earlier, giving me some, some feed for the uh, microphone speech here. Uh, doing those, uh, doing that style of learning is great when you're learning how to do a, uh, an offense or a defense, where you're just kind of repetitively running through it, running through it, running through it. Uh, I'm not going to rip on him. Uh, five feet out is, is, is great, it's, it's got its merits. I would highly recommend that him if he had the coaching stuff out. The sooner you can start putting people in defense, even if they just see the defense there, so that they can do something like that, the better and more likely they are to retain it. Um, so, one of the other things we're really going to do is okay, well, we want to start blocking and moving into random. How do we do that? Um, there is a theory of learning in the language called space repetition. Uh, there's a company called Pimsleur, and this is the way that they teach. Hey coach, hope you're enjoying the video. A couple things, first of all, like down below, that helps us a lot being found on YouTube. Second thing is make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell up above, you'll get a notification every day when we go live. And then also go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who wanna get better. Language, so we're all gonna learn today. You guys are ready for this, I don't know if you guys are interested in doing some uh, back and forth with me. But we're gonna learn the word woman in Swahili. Because I can't imagine anybody here speaking Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> so the word, uh, and we're, we're going to do, we're going to do a space repetition, and what this looks like is we're going to do it uh, in short, short spaces, and as we go, it's going to get longer and longer and longer. So every time we say the word Munamki, I would love for you. I don't care if you say that or not. <coughs> but just even if you say it anyway, um, that's fine. And we're going to have to start the rest of my speech, and by the time we leave here, you're probably not.
getting the in the language, getting the word gets in the back of your head and you will not be. Um, and every time you pull it back up, it's strengthening the uh, synapse in our brain. It's called making it more durable synapse between what you've learned how to do and it actually pulling it out. And the same thing happens with our motor skills. Uh, and I'm sure you guys by now we're getting significantly farther and farther apart in most of your <laughs> so that's one of the best ways that we can take it. We can start with a lot of practice, and it can be a lot and start to uh, move it toward the randomized practice as we go, just by spacing it out further and further apart. So um, I know a lot of people went over earlier, I may be a little short on that. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I personally, some drills that you might do, um, some things that you could do as far as randomizing.
So that's what obviously is going to do with this game. Like, uh, you can put Lantern on that and so on and so forth. Uh, certainly, that was the most game like. Uh, and then taking those uh, drills that Coach Mack was doing earlier, that was kind of a lot. Well, he was doing very quickly, though, I imagine, in his practices. They run through that first play over and over and over. And then Aaron sort of at some point you start mixing it up. He might call an hour and we have it in the end. It's a great opportunity for you to take an mm -hmm. offense or a few minutes from block right now. Um, I do want to point out this is something that I think uh, probably every coach in here does that the Shay and Warren's kind of they revisited this uh, about four years later and they had an involvement to the randomized group where okay, it's gonna be random, we're gonna tell what's coming next, just what's going next. And what they found was uh, the, these guys would know what's coming next, they disengaged from what they were doing. And they thought about what was coming ahead of time, but by the time we got there, they were disengaged from that, so literally it was making them worse. And, and so what I see this do in basketball, uh, when you do a real simple money, you might be coaching somebody to deep cut right, uh, you know, throw the right side, or your deep cut, go into the lane, and then the ball you're going for a pass for it. How many times do you teach somebody how to do that? And say, oh, by the way, if they don't fall for the, for the cut, and they just stand there, just go back to it. Well, you've completely just did exactly what I said. said uh, it disengages them from doing both now, and they, they haven't learned it from themselves. So a great opportunity for us uh, as coaches to change that is, hey, if this person doesn't, what can you do to explain it? What can you do? And they might give you the wrong answer. Well, try it. It's a lot. It might, it might be a good answer for them. Eventually, kind of guide them to the answer so that they determine that that's their own answer, not one that you just gave them, and they had to uh, create the, the solution themselves. Uh, that's one of the things we're looking for. Uh, I do want to point out, um, kind of say something like, you know, the whole back to think it's important. One of the reasons we love block practice so much is if I have somebody out there shooting three pointers, only hit me and three pointers, and they make four, and then they do it a week later and they make five, improve it. Well, maybe. Um, it, it, it's hard to say, but we can, we can test it, we can make it, and we can record it. It's very easy for coaches to sit and go, oh, they got better. But improvement in the acquisition phase, which is what we saw with a lot of practice early on, is not necessarily negative that they don't know what happened to It's so hard for coaches, it's so hard for people in, in the golf culture, in the basketball culture, to gain those numbers. When you go, they take a three point. They shot a lot, they work in the nails, I think it's so hard to start engaging that. Are they getting better or they just have to be making more shots because they're easier this time? Or uh, it's just so hard to engage with something that we hold on to as coaches because the block practice is so much easier for us. Uh, but uh, I think Coach Warren kind of throwing uh, touch on is that the harder it gets, the more difficult you practice it the better, um, you know, if you can create some chaos in your practice, it doesn't look pretty, and that's why that site's called Train on the The uglier we practice, usually the better we play, uh, because it, it does allow us to learn. Um, if you can create some chaos in your practice, as odd as that sounds, it's going to, uh, going to help you and your uh, practice you learn to do what you're doing better. Uh, so we do want to try to make practice as hard as we possibly can, so that when we get into it, it's, uh, it's not too so difficult. So, in conclusion, um, you know, we've got a lot of randomized practice. Neither one's wrong, neither one's right. Uh, certainly, these studies have shown that randomized practice helps us to retain information better, uh, we get the games and we, we perform better. But there are definitely points and uh, times that block practice works really, really well. It's still application. Uh, as we move a little bit further along, the people have retained the skills. It is definitely more beneficial for us to go randomized practice. Um, and, and so, that's kind of the gist of what I'm going to have today.
Hey coach, so glad you enjoyed the video. Subscribe and like before you leave. And also go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. It's got everything and a roadmap for you to become a better basketball coach. So go over and check it out. And let's head back to the next video, wherever that would be.